Okay guys, so what we're going to do today is we're going to review covalent body, not covalent, I am body, and we're going to practice naming and writing the bonds, okay? And so let's just remind ourselves how to do this before we just go in. So we're going to use our POD as our uh, introductory and our reminder. So first we have Na3ASO4. Okay, and so when we look at this, what is the first part of this? Sodium. Sodium, right? And is that a transition element? No. Are you sure? Yes. yes, it's representative. So what do we do? How do we write this? Sodium. You just write its name. So you just write sodium. And then what's the second part of this? It's polyatomic ion. It's a polyatomic ion. Very good, Reagan. So... Which one is it? Arsenate. Arsenate. Very good. Very good. Okay. So sodium arsenate. Are we finished? One. Yes, we are. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So sodium arsenate. So that's practicing with the naming. Do y'all want to do one with the Roman numeral before we continue? Yes. yes. Okay. So when we do one with the Roman numeral, why does it have a Roman numeral? Because there's a transition element, but why else? You can have more. You can have charge. That's right. You can have more than one oxidation number or charge. And so, whenever we look at this, like for example, I'm gonna give you. All right. We'll look at that one. Okay. When we name this, the first thing we need to do is we look at our first element and determine if it's transition or representative. Which one is it? It's copper, so it's a transition. So we can have more than one oxidation number, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to determine which one we have, and how are we going to do that? Very good. We're going to reverse the charges. And one way to do that, like, you can either reverse them and bring them back up to where they were, or you can separate them and say, okay, I'm going to put copper over here, but I'm going to look at the second, my anion, because whenever I look at my anion, they're going to have a fixed oxidation number, right? So it's always going to be the same. So I'll put it over here. And what is the oxidation number for sulfur? Negative, Negative two. Negative two. And so because that two shows up up here, did it cancel out? No. So what's this got to be? A one. Because, see, that's an understood one right there. So it's going to go up there. So it's going to be positive one. So when I write the name of this, how do I write it? Copper. Copper. Roman numeral one. Sulfide. 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 Very good. Why is it I D E? Very good. It's only one element. It's a monatomic ion. Okay, meaning that's only an ion made up of only one element and not remember polytonics are a group of covalently bonded elements that have an overall charge. Okay, so now let's reverse this and we're going to write the name really quick. And so, let me just make one up. Um, let's see. So nickel 2 phosphide. So when we have nickel 2 phosphide, what's the first thing you want to do? Write the symbol for nickel and put its oxidation number. So nickel is Ni, and what's its oxidation number? What's its charge? Positive 2. Positive 2. How'd you know that? Because you had a Roman numeral 2, so we just put that positive 2 there. All right, and then phosphide, what's its symbol? P. P. And then we have to figure out its oxidation number. It's negative 3. And the reason we know that is because phosphorus has how many valence electrons? Five. So it's closer to eight. So it's going to gain electrons to try to get to eight. So remember, it either wants to be at eight or zero. So it's going to go to eight. So it's going to gain three. And by bringing in three more negative charges, it's going to be a negative three. And then we're going to crisscross, bring only the numbers down. The two, three. So we're going to have nickel. Three, phosphorus, two. Okay? How y'all feel about that? Y'all ready for a little bit more fun review? 
Okay, let's have the number ones, which would be the corner up here, upper left corner. Um, in each group, go get the uh, dry erase boards. And let's have the number twos, go get the markers and some erasers. And we'll move into your groups, okay? give you your first problem you're gonna work on your own and that means work quietly all by yourself okay then when the timer goes off you're gonna put your heads together and what that means is that you're gonna work with your teammates okay to check your answer or to help them with their answer if someone else has a question okay you are gonna work together as a little group then when the second timer goes off I'm gonna select a student and that student's going to hold up your group's answer. Okay? Alright. I get my timer to come up. And y'all are going to have about 30 seconds. We're going to try that. Are you ready? So I'll put your first problem up here on the board. Instead of showing me your answer, 
the person I choose is going to leave their group and go to the group, like the next group, like person from this group, you'll go back to group two, person from group two, you'll come over to group three, person from group three, you'll go to group four, and group four, you'll come to group one. And you're going to share your group's answer with this new group. And that's how we're going to check that, okay? All right. So, let's see, what's our next problem going to be? Put your heads together. Put your heads together. job today. So let's just remember, when is our test? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay, so we're going to be very ready for that. Um, on your way out today, I want you to put your worksheets in that we've been working on.